I wanted to get a feel from you, like what other things, what other questions you had, what you wanted to know, um, what insight we can give you and where we can go from here. You know, it's good that we're having the discussions. I want to keep having the discussions. Um, but just want to know how we can move forward, you know, in continuing this. Because just like in the media, it was sensationalized, it was highlighted for a period of time, and now you don't hear anything. But um, the inequality is still going on. The injustice is still going on. It's still an issue of, of, of humanity and how we can actively come together to be proactive in changing that. And so I wanted to hear your heart, Leslie, and yours, um, Pollyanna. Well, when I come to these um, talks, I'm prayerful and I, I come with a really open heart to hear what you all have to say and to, um, well, being a woman of faith, to include God in everything that I say. So I kind of have tried to come without my own agenda. Um, so I didn't really think of any questions for you today. I did have um, I read an article that's kind of it's it's kind of related, but I have a question about that, but that's minor. But yeah, my heart is just to show up and just to understand, and I know these are recorded to be shared so that other people can hear this conversation mm -hmm. and hear your hearts. Because I believe that real change comes one individual, one heart at a time. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, you can make laws up here and changes up here on a governmental level or on a you know, you can go up the levels of society, but unless it starts from, and you want to make those changes, but people have to understand them and internalize them. And um, so, yeah, I want to be a part of the change. That's my heart. And I want to understand it thoroughly. And I want to show up consistently. Okay. So that's kind of where I am. So I guess my question is, wh how are you two feeling about the dialogues and, and where you are? And it does grieve me to see, um, well, the president uh, capitalizing on this division and capitalizing on what I fear is fear and fanning the flames of um, civil unrest. So that greatly grieves me. Um, I know we can all feel powerless about what's going on at the top, but that's what that's why I think once again our discussions and our message and then be willing to, to share it, um, then it hopefully other people's hearts and viewpoints and um, how they see life are changed. But it's really hard because the types of problems we're having here, I mean, some of it's from small children, we watch, we see, we're socialized, and you're blind to even what you, even your own prejudices, you're blind. And so you gently have to unravel that. And some people, it's a terribly fearful thing to be, to, to be introspective, to be self-aware, to look at where this is all coming. And when you have a lot of pain and fear, people, they, they want to lash out as opposed to look in. I think that's a human tendency. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to thank you for sharing your perspective and your insight. Um, I do have a question that I want to give Pollyanna an opportunity to share too. And then I know you, you want to know where we are and how we feel about these conversations. So if you just want to um, jot this down and I'll come back to it. But the question that I have for you is, 
what is it that you want to get an understanding of? Like, what can, what do you want to know, I guess? Um, and then I'll just, I'll try to, yeah, that's for you. For but, like, but not right now. I want to give Polly <clears throat> an opportunity to share and then we'll come back to that question. Okay, gotcha. It's, it's different when you look at leadership and leadership is really running things because when you think of social media and media itself, if it bleeds, it leads. And what happens is things get pushed down because of other things going on, no matter how big or small it is, they never go back and recapture. And that's why we're still here 400 years later mm -hmm. because it was never kept on the forefront and we become complacent or not even complacent, that's a bad word. We become wrapped up in the immediate and forget that if we would fix the root, mm -hmm. we would alleviate some of that immediate stuff. That's how I see it. And, and this is about basic human rights. This isn't even equality yet. Can I just have my basic human rights? Because to me, that's what Black Lives Matter mean then we add injustice and then we add equality and then we add the other stuff but it's about the basic human rights so now once again the news has reduced the amount of coverage of black lives matter because we got other stuff going on all fair all is fair but that takes away from the mind, the fact that we haven't fixed the basic human right of, a, of being a black person in America, born in America, not African American, American, black American. Mm -hmm. Don't tag me with something from my heritage because that's my heritage. And so, it, so it, it's yours too because we all came from somewhere and it wasn't America, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can all be called African white, African Jewish, African Latina, African everything, because that's where it, where it started. So it's the basic human right is what I'm looking for. And I don't <clears throat> want people to negate the fact that you don't even give me the basic human rights as an American, regardless of my color. Pa Pollyanna, can I ask for clarification? Because yes. um, <clears throat> I wanna hear, and this is just pure from uh, trying to understand. When you say I want my basic human right, can you explain more what exactly that means to you? That means I don't want to be prejudged because I'm black. I want to walk into a room as an American and be able to go to a counter and get the same treatment. Not equal, just the fact that I can walk in that store. And I can tell you I'm in North Carolina and I know there are some restaurants I can't go into. Mm -hmm. I served in the military with everyone we were all in the same uniform to be told you can't come home with me and that's just has nothing to do with equality that has to do with the fact that i'm another human being that will not be welcomed and yeah and to further yeah. clear to further clarify that or add on to that um a basic human right is to walk into a department store to purchase something without being followed because of the color of my skin, you know, to, to not be profiled, you know, because of the color of my skin or um, those are just a couple examples um, and things that I've encountered. I've encountered some of the things that Pollyanna shared as well. Um, 
And that's something that it's become a part of our norm and it shouldn't be, but it is. Not that we've accepted it, um, we've just adapted. And so. <clears throat> yeah, and that's something that I don't, that I don't think about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never, I never have to think about that. Right. Right. And that's, that's what we want. We want to get to a place where we don't have to think about it, but we do. Um, honestly, when I prepare to go out and present myself, you know, to go out and do my daily errands or daily meetings or whatever it is I'm doing, I think about how I'm presenting myself, what I look like from head to toe, because I know based on what I look like, uh, I'm going to be judged anyway, but I'm very mindful of, of my appearance and what I'm presenting, especially when I know I'm going into an area that's predominantly white, um, because I know they're going to judge me as soon as they see me, not because of who I am, but the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm always very mindful about how I present myself because I know that I have to go that extra mile, um, honestly, to make them comfortable. To make yeah. them comfortable. Yeah. To make them I'm comfortable. So that they will hear me and they will see me beyond what they've made up in their mind or the prejudices they have, you know, the speed mm -hmm. place through which they're, they're looking. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, that takes a lot of energy. It's a lot of mental energy. Yeah, um, walking into a room and um, trying to identify who are your allies and who is tolerant of you and who are your enemies, basically. Unbelievable. I mean, I totally believe you, but it's, you know, it's not something that I, you know, that I experience here in the U.S. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that, I don't know if that answered part of your question about wanting to understand, um, but that's good. Yeah, that did. That does. Okay. That does. Because for me, sometimes, you know, equality, justice, all, all of that seems like it's in the same pot. So it's interesting to hear Pollyanna delineate it and say, no, these, there's a hierarchy here, right? At the, the first thing I just want to be seen as the human being I am without people seeing my race first. And you know, um, I'm not trying to compare it because there's no comparison. But when I lived in Europe, when I lived in Innsbruck, you know, I was an American, I didn't speak the language. There are you know, it's human, it's human nature. It doesn't mean we need to accept it. But I could keep my mouth shut and blend perfectly. <laughs> as long as I kept my mouth shut. I, and sometimes I tried to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> because once I talked, it was my talking. That was like, oh, you're a foreigner. Right. Um, so I don't know, that just came to mind. I have a little experience, different experience than a lot of Americans because I have lived abroad. I, please hear me, I'm not comparing that to what is going on with our institutional racism and with the wounds of this, I see it as wounds of this country. And I used to spend time thinking about um, why is Europe so different than the U.S. with race. Every, you know, everywhere in the world, they have prejudices, they have this. I mean, you get two towns, two high schools next to each other. And I'm not talking about that doesn't equate to the deep, deep, horrible wounds. And I started coming to the conclusion of that the U.S. is suffering from uh, slavery and everything that came from that. It's a deep wound. And it wounds, it, well, it, it wounds, of course, the black community the most, 
but it wounds everyone because it's not it's not good for our country it's not people don't understand that i mean when we all recognize our humanity and we all work towards that that is good for us for all of us it's good for america so that was a good comparison not waiting and trying to blend in but by not speaking you were fine exactly so imagine walking into the room mm -hmm. talking and yeah. not saying a word and that's and that's the the human aspect of it mm -hmm. is we can't hide the fact that we're black and if i may answer just for one second the differences that i feel is slavery absolutely there was always a separation of the color the separation of the classes through slavery because even though there were some blacks that were given rule over other blacks there was never an equality or a, a basic human acceptance of the black man, man being gender neutral. Mm -hmm. Unlike in Europe, where they realized everybody came from somewhere else. Right. In America, they didn't even respect the people of the land, much less the people that they brought to the land, because they brought blacks to the land owning them against they, their will <laughs> right they own them so they brought them against their will and then they sold them so someone else bought them and they never had a chance to say i'm not for sale mm -hmm. and that mentality, i didn't want to come here and that mentality and that mindset is still very much active and alive today. It's just presented in a different package within the system. And having lived in um, Michigan, I grew up in Michigan, and I lived in California, and I lived in Texas. <laughs> and um, I'm not claiming there isn't racism everywhere. But it's <clears throat> in the states where I think since uh, slavery was a, the backbone of the economy and, and, and the Civil War, I think that um, the wounds are deeper for the black community there. There's more division there. I don't know. I, I'm speaking from my own experience. I don't know what, how you either of you feel about that or if you've lived other places in the country or i've i mean i've lived in other cities and other states and other countries um from my own personal experience the united states is the only place where there's been a negative connotation to the color of my skin you know, I was embraced and welcomed in Japan. I was embraced and welcomed in, um, um, I'm sorry, France. I was embraced and welcomed in Spain. Um, here in the States is the only place that I've encountered such overt racism mm -hmm. because of the color of my skin. And, you know, I wanted to touch on the whole Black Lives Matter movement, you know, um, the origin of the Black Lives Matter, and I think people have just caught on, have just picked it up because it's a catchy slogan. But the origin of the Black Lives Matter movement was really um, the root of it is is it begins with the LBGT community, um, and it was really about the inequality um, and the, the racism that they were experiencing because of their um, sexual preference. So it's really not even related to the Black Lives Lives Movement, it just kind of got incorporated in the mix because that name was, name was um, that slogan was catchy. Yeah, I guess that is a question. 
more about the origins, if you know about the origins of Black Lives Matter, because of course there I've seen media accounts that say, oh, it's a terrorist organization and this and that. And, um, and, and you know, what is the truth behind that? What, who, who, who started it? Who, um, who founded it? And I know it's a huge organization now and I support it, but I am more curious, you know, cause you hear propaganda or you, whatever you want to call it. Um, so who, who did found that and how long has it been? And was it a different name? And then they adopted that name if it was started by the LGBT community? It wasn't a different name. It, it was started because of, um, that community feeling that they were being discriminated against. And it's just kind of blossomed into something else. And then it became a catchy slogan. So everybody just latched on to it. Mm -hmm. So. It was, um, and I, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna fact check this real quick. Uh, because people usually try to make it something that it's not. Mm -hmm. Because I, I knew it was started in 2013, and that's what it says, by a woman. And it has three different people here. But it was a, show, a social movement against anti-racist advocacy. Mm -hmm. And what happened is like everything else, when there's confusion in the topic or confusion in the definition, people put it aside. Mm -hmm. So when she went out trying to say the importance of the fact that we didn't have civil rights, she didn't have the backing. And then when Colin Kaepernick, and this is, is my definition of Colin Kaepernick, which, you know, I've argued with my son about this, but when Colin Kaepernick kneeled at the football games, mm -hmm. what I said to my son was his message was confusing because if I could not articulate what he was saying, what he was kneeling for, there was confusion in the message and that is why no one would follow it. And he wanted to tell me there was no confusion and, and it took him a while before he said, mom, I think you're right. Because if you can't explain it to me, then there's confusion and it's easy for someone to just put it aside because he was trying to do the whole, the same thing, mm -hmm. but he was doing it not, he was doing it for injustice and equality, not for civil rights. Okay, what he was saying was we're not equal. And what the Black Lives Movement says is, I'm a human just like you. Okay, and I might have that all wrong, but this is how I see it. I'm a human, just like you. This is about humanity for me. Black Lives Matter is about humanity, about treating me humane, mm -hmm. so that if you treat everybody like a piece of crap, treat me like a piece of crap. It's not about equality, it's about humanity. When I talk about equality, I'm talking about the same price, the same wages, the same living conditions, the same like that. When I'm talking injustice, if I jaywalk, I want your crime to be jaywalking just like mine. Mm -hmm. But Black Lives Matter is about the fact that I'm a human. This is civil Im imbalance. This is about the fact that I can't walk into the same restaurant. And if I walk in with you, neither one of us are gonna get served. Or better yet, they're going to come to the table and ask you, how may I help you? And then just look at me. 
because I'm not even worthy of the address. Mm -hmm. That's what Black Lives Matter means to me. And it's tough. It's tough because I have black boys and girls in, in, my, in my family. It's tough because they can't be their authentic self because we can't define what their authentic self is. Wow. It's tough because I have to make sure he carries an ID to go on a walk. It's tough because there's an app on my phone that says I'm being pulled over so that it calls my house right away and starts recording. And I'm going to have to put that on my son's phone now that he's going to be driving by himself. Mm -hmm. It's tough because he's black and I have to worry. It's tough because I have to say, you're black, you can't go there. And he doesn't understand because in his own mind, he's just one of the boys. And we, we explain to him, it's tough because if you and your friends get pulled over and it's not your fault that we live in a white neighborhood and you were, you were raised in an upper, an upper lower class, upper lower, lower, upper lower, not medium, <laughs> upper lower class environment that 90% of your friends are white and you think you can go everywhere they go. But if the police stop you, you're the one going to jail. Or worse. It's tough or worse. That's the, that's the, the Black Lives Matter, that I want him to ride in the car with his friends and if they run the red light and someone gets handcuffs on them, it's all of them and not just him. And right now it will be just him because he's six one and he's just a little baby in my eyes. To the police, he's aggressive. My husband to the police, he's aggressive, okay? Which, which immediately, causes friction when he's not. My husband's never had handcuffs on. I've never had handcuffs on. And if we would have, that doesn't give you permission to do it every time because I'm black. And that's the basic civil rights that they tried again, again in 2013. Martin Luther tried it, Malcolm X tried it. They all tried it from way back and what it is, is basic. Okay, my son, the oldest one, believe it or not, he, we were filling out an application and come back Jen, we were filling out an application and on the application, he yes. marked black Hispanic and I was taken aback. I was taken aback, not because he's not Hispanic, because his last name is Echeverria. Okay, so he is definitely Cuban. But when he stopped by, <laughs> but when he stopped by the police, he's black. They don't get that far sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, it's basic. Can I just? Can you just see me? because we all see color. So don't say, don't ever say we don't see color. Don't see color. Okay, we all see color. But I want to know if he stopped because he's mixed. My youngest one is mixed. My middle one is not. Okay, so I have a rainbow of kids, but they'll all be stopped in black and put in handcuffs and their mother, is, is not as kind as her children because they've never been in handcuffs. But right. they will be now because there's a fear of their basic human right to be Black. And Brian's the only Hispanic. And we had a talk, what are you doing marking Hispanic? 
because <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> And he's completely bilingual, okay, but I forgot. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, Pollyanna, thank you for sharing, because that really helps me understand um, how you see it. And, and yeah, we start at basic humanity. And that is probably the hardest thing to change. I mean, people's gut level reactions, their stereotypes, their fear. But that's why I think grassroots and, and conversations and keeping the conversation up and, and letting people hear your heart is what is, I mean, we're not going to, some people get hurt about, we're not, t anyway, we're going to change we're looking for change and we're looking for change at individual level for those who who are willing to look at themselves thank you um leslie jen you're just hopping on so I'm not gonna do a at what we're talking about today and hey you look beautiful um i started off at the beginning just asking a question of, of Leslie, you know, what, what do you want to understand? Because we're having these conversations and they're great and we want to spark conversations in others, which is why we're recording it. Um, and, you know, just wanted to get an understand from Leslie, what is it that she wanted to understand about the challenges we encounter on a daily basis, our mindset because of the challenges that we encounter. And um, Pollyanna has shared, you know, her perspective. I've shared mine. And Leslie just said she wanted to get a greater understanding from us and greater and, and consistency, uh, consistently, what we encounter. And and um, that's that's in a, I think that's in a nutshell it, right, Pollyanna and Leslie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's where we're at. So we're just kind of expounding on that. Um, and. Pollyanna made the point that it's, it's she wants basic, she wants to be granted, we want to be granted basic human rights to be able to walk into a restaurant and be served because there's certain areas that Pollyanna lives in in North Carolina. If she she knows she doesn't go because she knows she won't be received. Um, yeah. You know, I've encountered and still encounter, you know, being profiled when I walk into certain department stores or certain organizations because of the color of my skin and, and stereotype and having to be mindful of how I present myself daily when I know that I'm going into certain areas, um, wherever I'm going, because I know they're not gonna judge me based on my intellect or just who I am. They're gonna judge me based on the color of my skin. So I am mindful about how I put myself together. That's something that's just become incorporated in my daily regimen. And so, you know, not wanting to have to do that. Like, I'm gonna tell you, even when I go do something as simple as going to the doctors, in my mindset, I'm thinking, is this man sincere? Is this team sincere? Or are they closet racist? That is my mindset now when I do it, especially the climate that we're living in now. Am I going to be treated differently? Are they going to dis discriminate me? Are they going to give me a different pricing system? Even when I'm going to, you know, do things business-wise, are they going to offer me the same opportunities that they would offer someone that was not of color? You know, are they going to make me aware of those opportunities because of the color of my skin? So those are just some of the things that, you know, we encounter on a daily basis. And then, you know, for our children, as Pollyanna was sharing, you know, fear for her sons, you know, because there is a fear more so than there are for women, but for African American men, there's this fear and this hatred of them, you know, on site without without cause. And so immediately, the response is they're more aggressive without reason, and they're targeted without reason. Especially if they're, you know, of a formidable stature, what other people think is formidable. So I think that's in a nutshell, kind of summarized it right. Yeah, to make sure it's not confused with LBGT. Right. It's just Black Lives in a nutshell. Right. Got it. So 
So with that, you know, is there anything specific, Leslie or Jen, that you want to understand or any questions that you have, if we can shed some more light, you know, because this is not going to change overnight. Continuing to have these conversations is the thing that's going to change within our sphere of influence, but also people observing these conversations is going to spark the conversation. Yeah, I agree. Um, I can't think of anything right now. I just love hearing these stories. Like, well, your your story made me laugh <laughs> so much. <laughs> Black and Spanish. Um, it's just, yeah, no, I mean, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. And I'm processing what you've said. Um, so I'm just trying to, to really think, like, is there anything specifically right. that, you know, I want to know more of or that I want to understand more of? And I'll... But I feel like yeah, I'll, I'll make it even more like something tangible as a point of reference. You know, I met you with the No Barriers um, group. Yes. Um, even being in that setting, I mean, I was comfortable, but there were, but I was guarded as well because yeah. I know that I was um, minority, and yeah. I know that you know. Um, even well, I think. Um, go ahead. I was going to say I think that's why I was very much um, attracted to being your friend right away because I felt more comfortable with you than I did the other people there and 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 obviously like from um from from the skin color I looked like everyone else there right, right, right. <laughs> but you know what I mean I think just from the vibe the energy the yeah. spirit the soul there was something that I was like yeah there's they're great there's nothing wrong with them they're awesome however like you me and you were just like Right. There was in a, a little corner. <laughs> there was a connection. And though yeah. it was a great environment and it was a, it's a great cause, I right. knew, because I'm sensitive to that, I knew that there were those that truly embraced me there, and there were yeah. those that tolerated me, and then there were those that did not want me there. Right. And so just kind of, you know, even having, having to manage all that, that energy was... Um, but it's become ingrained within my within my life because I'm in an arena a lot of the times where I am either the only or one of the few. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that because it's it. I don't think I put it into perspective like mentally and emotionally and energetically what that does to you. Mm -hmm. Like I I understand what you're saying 100%. But when I'm at, like actually hearing you say this, I'm like, wait a minute, like because you've been in this situation so many times, the fact that you have to do this all the time, it's fucking annoying. <laughs> and it's draining. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry from, you know, behalf of, you know, humanity. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it is draining. Wow. And I love you, Jen. You know, that's what we were talking about. It, it's humanity. You know, it, the, the bigger issue is humanity and the lack of humanity for Black Americans. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's commonplace and it's, it, it's accepted and it's expected. It's, it's gone on so long. And, um, you know, we don't, I haven't ex accepted it, but I've adapted. And honestly, I'm in a place, I don't want to adapt anymore. You know, so I have to be very mindful. Um, I don't want to adapt. I just want you to accept me for who I am as a woman. Not because, you know, I'm one of those educated black, blacks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Educa educated, let me say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to lose opportunities because you don't see value in me because you can't see past the color of my skin. Right. So how, how would you, like best case scenario or like, you know, magic wand, how would you change that, right? Like knowing that this is a thing that you've done your whole life, you've adapted and you no longer want to adapt. How do we, and I'm speaking for me as a white person, how do I help you make you feel like you're not adapting, you're part of this. Like this is you, you, you and I are we're one, we're the same. Like how, how do, is that, yeah, like how do, how do we do that for you? 
Mm -hmm. so how would I make you feel like that? Pollyanna, you want to answer that? And then I'll follow up. It's, it's the ones and twos that make us comfortable. Mm -hmm. It is when we gather with your friends. Because okay. the change happens when it's spread throughout. Half of, the, half of it is, and I can say it starts from the top, but it, the top to me is every household. Yes. Okay, because I can't even deal with administration. It has to start at every household at yes. the top. So that's my top. How do you make that better for me? It's welcoming, but it's welcoming. I'm welcomed everywhere. <laughs> it's, how, it's how you treat my son right. on his worst day. You know, it's how you, how you react to my grandkids. You know, because I, I often say, learn from their grandfather at the fishing pond. That's why we have a lot of the, the mindsets that we do because they weren't changed at the household. Yes, I agree. So that's where it starts. It starts at the household where there is a gathering that people can have this conversation. What does it mean how, what does it mean to you if you were in a room and you were the only white? Yeah. Put yourself in that position. Yeah. Oh, I have and... to. Very uncomfortable. Very un <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, straight up, sister, I have been. Like, <laughs> and not because yeah. it's, be it's just because mentally that's how I'm wired, right? And all my guard is up. Um, but yeah, very uncomfortable. Sorry. It's very uncomfortable. And that's how we walk around every, every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into a store shopping and you wonder why the person looked at you at the store or why when you walked in, yours was the only ID that they really looked at. They asked everyone for an ID, but they really looked at yours. So... Okay. Thank you for wearing a mask. <laughs> Are you going to the drive-through? <laughs> I wish. I have to jump off and drop off some money. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you need my address? <laughs> <laughs> I will when I get to North Carolina. I would love to meet you. <laughs> Come on down. Yes. Oh my goodness. I like love the price it. Is right. Come on down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so no, the I issue is the issue is the warm feeling that you give my neighbor. Okay, my neighbor Michelle. Yeah. Because I've already been accepted. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to treat the one next to me? Got it. That's the litmus test to me. Yeah. I would have to say that that's it. You know, I, yeah. I can't add anything to that. So, yeah. I don't know. No, it's good. And I got that. I, I absolutely got that. Like, we I went to my, my son here owns a coffee shop. And when he first opened the coffee shop, it was months before they let them know that it was black owned. Mm -hmm. My daughter-in-law was just the general manager. She wasn't the owner mm -hmm. because it presents a different clientele. Mm -hmm. And so people can go in there and sit and use the Wi-Fi and they had meetings in there and all of that. And of course, people who knew them look like me and mm -hmm. you because he's a pastor. Okay, so, but there would tend to be more people who were vanilla wafer color rather than cocoa color like me. And someone said to them, I thought this, I thought this coffee shop was for blacks. 
Oh, wow. What does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? Because that's the mindset. If I walk in, you know, and even realtors will tell you, if you go to a neighborhood and you see, you're looking for a new house and you go to the neighborhood and you see people jogging in the neighborhood, that's okay. But if you see a white lady pushing kids, that's the neighborhood to buy in. And when we were selling our house here in North Carolina, I was taken aback because the realtor told me to de-ethnic my home. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> I went numb. I couldn't pack. I couldn't do anything. No. Yes. Wow. And we had some people who... You know, and we would leave before they came to see it. And mind you, we were in that same gated community. And we would leave before people came to see it. But I know there was a time that we might have been outside getting ready to leave. And someone drove by. We didn't know. And they, we didn't know they were coming to see the house. So, and you know, you check out the neighborhood. But all of a sudden, the person who was coming to view the house call the realtor and say they were no longer interested. We were on three acres, almost three acres, uh, 2,500 20, 20, 20, square foot home. They never came in, but my husband and I were in the yard. Leaving, leaving, trying to get out of the way because now our, our home is de-ethnic, <laughs> you know, so hopefully they will, they will come in and look at it but that's, that's the shoes that I put on daily. And even though, and I'm sorry for talking so much today, Michelle. Don't apologize. Even though Oprah can have a big old meeting with all these people at the top that have an opinion on why Black Lives Matter. No one's asked me about the ethnic being my house just to get it sold in a in a gated community where there's only 32 homes in it. But this, you know, they don't understand that because they sit where they are they are already in the boardroom. And we're just trying to go to the restaurant around the corner. So we send we send the black Hispanic, <laughs> <laughs> the sun. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Unbelievable. I've I never been told to de-ethnic my home when I was selling it for sure. Because they would live after you. It doesn't matter. They would move into a house that was lived in by whites. They just won't move into a house that was lived in by Blacks. We can clean their house. They just don't think our house is clean. Unbelievable. I'm sorry. That's disgusting. But we sold our house in February. <laughs> well, you're in a new house? I'm in a rental now. We're building. Yeah. We're building. Oh, that's exciting. So. Yeah. It's it's well, a different so this welcome to America. So does that give you a little bit of a greater understanding, Leslie? You know? And oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, and there's many stories, you know, that I could tell as well, but I just don't I don't like going there because it just brings my energy down. Um yeah. I just want to focus on what we can do to kind of continue the conversation and maybe spark something in others, just like, you know, what I shared with you, Jen, you like you knew, but me voicing it, you know, caused totally you to different perspective. Yeah. And so totally those are different. Like I felt it. I, I felt it. Like I got that. Okay. Yeah. You yes. know, and I'm more mindful. I mean, I, I feel like I always have, but now, especially now even more. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And even, you know, going into, different organizations like women's groups and business women's groups. And, you know, I've gone to 
several numerous business groups that were predominantly white. And when I walked in, it was like, you know, why are you here? What are you doing? Yeah. So it's just on every level. It's on the professional level. It's on, you know, the social level. It's on the spiritual level. I've always gone, you know, um, gone to a um, diverse church. Mm -hmm. um, and I attempted to go to just, you know, an all white or an all black, but it was just that it, it was off because I, I love the diversity, but, but it's a different climate. So having these conversations is good because it gets people thinking that gets them, you know, remembering or, you know, bringing things to the forefront that they might not have thought about. And the awareness, I believe having the awareness is the first step in creating long lasting change because it sparks conversations and it, it sparks you know, different mindsets and different perspectives and different thought patterns and processes for people to be more aware of what they can do when they see mm -hmm. those things happen. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'll speak for my generation. I might be the oldest of all of you. I think I am. But anyway, um, <laughs> I know that people that are in my age range, they want to say, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced. I'm not racist, you know, because I never, I, you know, and they're saying this when they never encounter um, a black person in their daily life. So I don't know how they, but, but they see that they, so they see that they, they, they personally are not, that they're not looking at their own blind spots mm -hmm. and their own, their own um, knee jerk is the best word I can think of reactions. And they're not also listening to the black community and listening to people's experiences and people's pain and people's, desire for change who are living it every day because it's easy to forget about it yeah i told i'm living in northern michigan it is a very white world here very white world here and so it's easy to not think about it it's it's not even um yeah so but people need to think about it and they need to understand it. And every, I, yeah, I believe this is a one person at a time. And if you change one person, then you can change their children, their grandchildren, um, their neighbors. And not everyone is going to be receptive, but there are people who just simply don't think about it. Yeah. Don't, well, because they've never had to experience it. I'll, I'll, right. tell, I'll tell you something. When my mother's second husband was Caucasian, so my youngest brother is mixed. Um, and watching what she had to endure while she was married to um, his dad made me vow that that would never, ever, ever, ever be me. Um, she, they got married. They had a child. Yeah, but they could not... The, his parents wouldn't accept my mom, period. Mm -hmm. And so and in not accepting my mom, they wouldn't accept my brother. There were times where she would drop him off, you know, when his parents would come to visit and she would take him to the airport, but she would go in and she would just stand, you know, around the corner so she could see them because she wanted to see what they were like, but they never accepted her. So they, you know, there was no, there was no relationship based on the color of her skin. And so I said that would never be me. And when I first started dating, I was 16, um, officially dating, I dated this Caucasian guy. And I got flack from both sides, from the, you know, from the Caucasian community and the, and the Black community. Um, and we dated, but when he told me that he could not take me to meet his parents because they wouldn't accept me, that was the, that was the end of it. 
And because I, I, I'm just at that point that young because of what I'd seen, I'm like, I'm not going to tolerate that, you know, and, and I've had people come to me now, you know, friends and associates, and they're like, you know, I see you being married to somebody of another culture of another, you know, um, diverse, you know, and I'm like, I really don't see that. Because, <laughs> you know, especially with society the way it is now, I don't know that I would trust that. You know, I, I'm, and I'm being funny now. I'm just like, okay, I don't know. You might be trying to marry me to take me out. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to get her, let her guard down, get her all comfortable, then I'm going to take her out. <laughs> I see you laughing, Pollyanna. I just want, I kind of wanted to lighten up the atmosphere. That's why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to go, Jen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know you I got, got your back. <laughs> Thank you. I know you got Me back. too. I'm like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And I need to. I need to go too, but I, this has been a great conversation. And that's my commitment. I'm just going to show up and keep having the conversation. So well, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to And talk to your friends. Oh, yeah. I do. So bring your friends on, you know, the more the merrier. So thank you guys for tuning well, in. Well, you say a prayer about that. I keep inviting my friends. <laughs> right, right, we're still praying. Remember, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not an overnight process. So thank you guys for tuning in to Where Do We Go From Here? Do you want to be a part of the solution, race, racial reconciliation? And we will join you guys next session. Until then, continue the conversation, share this video, and you can be a part of the solution. Until then, take care, be well, and God bless, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.